one of those days I just feel a little bit out of sorts. You know what? I know what it is. I gotta put my jacket on. Can I do that? I gotta class this place up a little bit, huh? No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's video, that's why. Got the video. Got to look good for the video. Anyway, it's one of those days, seriously, where I just feel a little out of sorts. I've kind of been like a half step behind. You saw me have to run out. All my notes were in the, in the room there. I'll tell you without the notes. I'm in, I'm in big trouble. But anyway, today I want to talk about spiritual warfare. And the title is called, this, The Battle Belongs to the Lord. That's why we sang that song. It's so true. The battle belongs to the Lord. And you're going to find as we go through this, that it's just not a battle you can win on your own. And it's also not a battle that you can choose not to fight. You're going to be engaged in it, and you can't win it on your own. It belongs to the Lord. You know, there was a boxer one time, and he was in the ring, man, and he was just getting pummeled. I mean, his face was all swollen, and it was bloody, and he was sore, and he was just getting beat to a pulp. And at the end of the round, he goes over, and his trainers go, man, you're doing great. You're doing great, Rick. Hang in there, man. You're just doing great. He said, this guy's not even touching you. Boxer looks over at him and says, well, then you keep an eye on that referee because somebody in there is killing me. <laughs> and the point is, no matter how much psychology he used and how many good words of encouragement he used, this guy was still getting beat up. And you couldn't deny that this guy was getting beat up. And that's exactly the way it is with us. No amount of talk that we can give another person can... Make them believe they're not in a battle because you are. And I don't want to alarm anyone here, but the fact is we are. It's a real opponent. In fact, it's, it's a battle of cosmic proportions. It's a spiritual battle. You can look around and you can see all the evidence you need to see in this world. We have nations who are waging war against one another. Right? We have violence of, of, any, of all kinds. We have broken homes. We have depressed people. We have suicides. We have all sorts of abuse. And you look and you say, you don't see the evidence of war? Just look around. It's there. I don't want to be, this isn't a message that's negative. I don't want to give you that impression at all because it isn't. The point is, I want to point out, there's a war. It's being raged. Now, this battle is a spiritual battle. I'm going to make a declaration now. We are at war. Isn't that what the president always does, right? When they finally say, the nation, we've declared war on such and such. Well, guess what? We are at war. And war has actually been declared on us. And we need to defend ourselves. It's the mother of all battles. And this particular battle can be the greatest source of joy for Christians or it can be the greatest source of despair for Christians. It all depends on how you fight it and who you let fight it with you. Now, this war affects every area of your life. And there's no way to escape this conflict. You can't go and hide in some foxhole, in some bunker, and avoid this particular war. You can't do it. It's going to find you. It has found you. Absolutely, positively guaranteed. I can sit there and say that and look at every one of your faces and say that with 100% confidence. This one's going to find you. And it already has. The sad part is there's a lot of Christians that don't even know they're at war. We're just going along in life and you know we have our bumps and we have our bruises and we have our good times and we have our bad times and you don't even realize you're in a war. Now, some people say, hey, ignorance is bliss, right? What's wrong with that? Let's take a look at your life. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying it could be better. Things that happen to you are things, some of them can be avoided. If we fight this fight with everything that we've got at our disposal to fight it with. I mean, look at your lives, and you tell me there's never a time when you're discouraged or you're depressed or you're downtrodden. And I pray there's never a time when we finally say we're defeated. But I also feel that if we don't choose the right sides and the right weapons, ultimately we will be defeated in this war. No man can stand against this enemy. So that we're at war here, there's so much at stake, and there's two questions that I want to make sure we address today. 
Just what is this spiritual warfare all about? And how do we fight this battle successfully? How do you do it? How do you win in this battle? If we're going to be in it, I don't have any choice but be in it, Jim. How do I win? Because I want to know how to win. I don't want to lose this one. Well, the essence of the battle is it's a spiritual battle. And consequently, a spiritual battle means we're fighting against the forces of good and the forces of evil. I mean, you always hear that, but it's, it's, it's a fact, guys. It's a supernatural spiritual battle. The definition, by the way, spiritual warfare, warfare is that conflict being waged in the invisible spiritual realm that is evident in the visible physical realm. It's a conflict that's being waged in this invisible spiritual realm. It's in the heavens. But it's evident in the phys visible physical realm. Just all those things I told you. Broken lives, broken nations. It's evident. We can't deny it. It's a battle between invisible angelic forces that affect you and me. And I say angelic, what oh, angelic means it's gotta be good. Remember Satan has his angels too. We call them demons. Now, it's really hard to see an enemy, or to fight an enemy that you don't see. Would you agree? It's really tough. And that's why most people don't even believe that it happens. But let me, see, let me tell you something. Don't just take my word for it. Paul says in Ephesians, for our struggle, this is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, by the way. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the 